the second stage of the uh, service life cycle is the service design. So taking the same example um, in the IESPs, um, you know, we, we have a set the objectives, we wanna go to the broadband. Now that's fine in the strategy phase, but now how are you going to implement it? That's something we need to address in the design. So in design, we get into the specifics. For example, what type of services, 10 Mbps services will be, what type of uh, technology we'll be using, DSL, uh, what type of infrastructure connectors, things we'll be using. So here we get into the specific designs and we you know, have all these stakeholders at one place and we try to gather as much information and then we try to implement what we have uh, made the uh, you know goals in the strategy and we want to convert it into the blueprints that how can we implement it. So that's the design stage um, where we get into the uh, details of how we're going to offer you know this and what are the exact details of that services for example 10 mbps broadband service one gigabits uh, per second broadband service things like this and then we also create a service design package, which is a document which addresses different aspects of the service. And this is a document which we can refer at any stage of the um, service in, in the uh, service, uh, which could be any stage, you know, not necessarily in the service design. There are different processes, uh, just like in the strategies, some uh, the common processes which are associated with the service design, are uh, design coordination, where you coordinate among all these stakeholders, see what is needed, what is required. Service catalog management is basically the list of all the services which you are currently offering. So it's like a brochure where you have the details of the uh, all the services available and their deliverables, contact information, pricing information that you can see in the service catalog management. Service level management where you can see um, you know, what are the customer's expectations in terms of the targets, for example, 10 Mbps, um, you know, connection, uh, that much reliability, highly reliable, for example, or uh, low latency in the internet access. So here you can make a SLA service level agreement and document all the service level agreements of the customer. Supplier management is the process related to our supplier. Uh, we want to get best um, you know of what the money we are spending and for example in some cases our service needs a certain goods or products from the supplier uh, on the basis of which we can provide our services for example we we sell the database solutions so that not only includes our database software and configuration, but we also need to buy the uh, you know, database, the hardware servers, which we get it from the supplier. So we are dependent to the supplier in some cases. If we don't get the supply, we won't be able to deliver. So you need to have a, you know, some sort of a agreement or the underpinning contract with the supplier. And in this way, you can get the best of your money you're spending on this. Availability management is about making sure that your services are available whenever authorized users want to access it. Um, you know, for example, you're running a, uh, you know, website where you, uh, for example, shopping website. You want to make sure that your website is up whenever the authorized users wants to make a shopping, may wants to, see what is available there. So that's making sure about the availability aspect. Capacity management is another process where you make sure that you have a required capacity um, depending on your demand. For example, as I said, during the certain time of the year, uh, let's say during Christmas time or during holiday season, you have a very high demand for certain products. The question is, do you have enough storage? Do you have enough um, production? Do you have enough manpower to, you know, make this um, production available? So that's something 
we consider in the capacity and we audit almost on annual basis to see if we have the uh, right capacity to deal with. Then the IT service continuity management is another process and I can explain in few lines. It's about withstanding failures. For example, you know, what happens if your server is down for any reason, there's a power outage, there is a damage to your infrastructure. What arrangements do you have to deal with that disaster? It's very similar to what we talk about the disaster recovery planning or the business continuity planning. You know, the, the, we know that how do you deal with those? How can you make your services withstand failures? So in this as you know stage, we um, deal with that. There's another um, the process in this design which talks about the information security management. This information security management, as the name suggests, here we want to make sure that our services are secure. For example, people, the customers are coming to our website to make a shopping. Is our website secure? Is their information secure? So this particular process deals with the confidentiality, uh, integrity, and availability, uh, making the information or the, you know, uh, keeping the information private or only available to, um, to the authorized users. Similarly, integrity is about making sure that the information is not compromised, you know, it's in uh, genuine. And then the availability is about your services are available whenever uh, authorized customers would like to use it. 